I'm Peter Pollack. I think the only important disclosure is that I am an interventional cardiologist, and so that's how I see the world. Um, we have just a few minutes to get through um, a case, and I'd like to, you to come away with a, a few learning objectives. The first is to explain the difference between primary and secondary MRs. So we just saw a great example of primary uh, mitral regurgitation. We'll talk more about secondary mitral regurgitation, the difference between the two in this um, case. I'd like to be able to select appropriate patients for transcatheter mitral valve repair, and then incorporate a recent trial, the COAP trial data, into your practice and decision making. So our case that we'll talk about is a 59-year-old lady. Um, she had a history of breast cancer, had bilateral mastectomies for recurrent breast cancer, and the first time had chemotherapy, the second time had um, radiation therapy. And this had left her with a dilated cardiomyopathy at EF about 45, 40%. Um, and then she had started to develop recurrent admissions for heart failure, in part related to a cardiomyopathy as well as related to um, mitral regurgitation. On exam, when I met her in, in clinic, um, she was fairly normotensive, not in any distress, um, no jugular venous distension, no signs of volume overload. She did have a blowing holosystolic murmur at the apex um, and some just trace lower extremity edema. So if we look at her echo, her transthoracic echo on the left side, we can see going from top to bottom, if you don't read a lot of echoes, right ventricle, left ventricle, mitral valve, and the left atrium. And then we can see in color on the right side of the screen, a lot of flow going backwards into her um, left atrium, consistent with um, her mitral regurgitation. And we see just highlighting the, the nature of her mitral valve here that the leaflets aren't coming quite back to the annular plane. They're sort of tethered and apically displaced, which is coming for <laughs> definitive of uh, secondary mitral regurgitation. So this is our question for the case, and it'll highlight a main teaching point is what treatment will help her symptoms and survival the most. So she has symptomatic severe secondary mitral regurgitation with reduced LV systolic function. Is it guideline-directed medical therapy, surgical valve repair, surgical valve replacement, or transcatheter mitral valve repair with the mitral clip system? So what's going to help her the most? All right. Nobody's voting for surgery. I think that's, that's great. Um, We've seen that surgery in secondary mitral valve regurgitation has a, an unfortunate history. And so between guideline-directed medical therapy and the mitral clip system, we, we see a split, and we're going to talk about that for the rest of the, our, our time up here. Um, so just to highlight the distinction, and, and we try to be categorical, and we know that these can overlap in some cases. When we talk about primary mitral regurgitation, we're talking about degeneration of the valve, prolapse, a flail segment, everything we just heard. Dr. Miller talking about, but with secondary mitral valve regurgitation, or what was called functional, sometimes called dysfunctional, it's really a problem of LV dysfunction and the effect of the left ventricle on the mitral valve, causing it to then regurgitate, rather than degeneration of the valve leaflets and mitral apparatus itself. So in very simple terms, primary MR is a broken valve, where secondary mitral valve regurgitation is a broken ventricle that's reflected with mitral valve regurgitation, and we approach them differently. So a nice example, much like the last case of primary MR on the left side, again, this is TEE, so the left atrium is at the top of the screen, ventricles at the bottom of the screen, we can see a flail P2 segment here. And then we see secondary mitral regurgitation on the right side of the screen. We can, we've zoomed out. Again, the left atrium at the top, the mitral valve in the middle of the left ventricle, see the ventricle is not contracting quite normally. The leaflets are apically displaced. They're tethered by the cortical apparatus into the ventricle, and they're not able to coapt well and seal appropriately, so we have severe regurgitation there. And this is, we saw in the guidelines that we have to distinguish between mitral, uh, between primary and secondary mitral valve regurgitation as we figure out how to treat the patients because the, tr the disease states are treated very differently. In secondary MR, the first thing we have to do is treat the heart failure, treat the ventricle, see if through medicines we can heal the ventricle and thus help the mitral valve secondarily. And then we do get an indication, there's a 2B indication for surgery in patients with se severe symptomatic stage D heart failure from their secondary MR. Otherwise, we don't get much of an indication. You'll notice that mitral clip hasn't made its way into the guidelines yet, and we'll talk about some recent data from the COAP trial that I think will impact the guidelines going forward. Some fundamentals about the mitral clip procedure, if you haven't seen or experienced this a lot, it's a beating heart procedure under general anesthesia because we use transesophageal echo to guide it. You can see an example of the clip on the right side of the screen. It's placed via fem femoral venous access and transeptal puncture to access the left atrium 
place the clip on the mitral valve itself, and it does preserve surgical options, so you can have surgery after the mitral clip is in place. It's inspired by the Alfieri stitch, and I think uh, Dr. Schaff will explain that the Alfieri stitch is not commonly used. It's more of, a, I think, a, a bailout technique, but it did inspire this procedure of clipping the anterior and posterior leaflets together to create a double orifice valve. If we look at a clipped valve on 3D, you can see we do create a very similar double orifice structure. This is our patient um, before the clip. You can see, again, the left ventricle on the front um, and all of the color illustrating the severe mitral regurgitation going back towards the left atrium, apical four-chamber view, and then afterwards, after the clip is placed, this was in fact two clips, then we have a small amount of residual regurgitation. And patients tend to feel better. In the Everest trial, which was the early trial of um, the mitra clip, which was both primary and secondary, a mix of, of regurgitation, over about 90% of patients, 9 out of 10 patients, felt better, and they felt better whether they had surgery or the mitra clip. And that's because their left atrial pressure, this is the regurgitant pressure. We can see a large V wave in the left side and the left atrial pressure tracing. That goes away. So we decrease the amount of regurgitant pressure-loaded blood going back into the left atrium, causing their symptoms of shortness of breath. I think we do a little bit more than that, and we'll see some data from the COAP trial about the effect this has on the ventricle going forward. So the COAP trial was a trial of the mitra clip in specifically secondary mitral regurgitation in addition to goal-directed medical therapy. And so everybody had to have very carefully regulated guideline-directed medical therapy before they were considered for the clip. And we can see over time that we stabilize by reducing the amount of regurgitation in these patients. We were able to stabilize changes in LV size. And so it's not just the immediate relief of that regurgitant flow into the left atrium that improves symptoms, but it changes the trajectory of their left ventricular remodeling. I think this is why it takes time to see the results. And that plays into when we saw this in these patients. So early on, because of that change in V-wave, that reduction in high pressure blood going to the left atrium, we saw a decrease in hospitalizations. But it took over 12 months to really start to see a change in the curves for all-cause mortality. I think that reflects a change in the, the disease trajectory that was affected by placing the clip on patients with their secondary MR. So at the end of 24 months, we saw a number needed to treat of just under six patients to reduce mortality in these patients with secondary MR. Now, if you pay attention to the literature, before we saw the publication of the COAP trial, we saw a European trial, which was MITRA FR, and they were different. They, the first trial came out saying it doesn't work, but, but we want to highlight why these two trials were different or how they were different and why I think the data came out differently. The first and, and most important thing is that MITRA FR was only followed for 12 months, and if we saw in that trial, in the COAP trial, we didn't see much improvement at 12 months. It was just a decrease in hospitalization. So the improvement in mortality outcome was a later finding due to that change in disease trajectory from reducing MR. There were also, there was a difference in how much regurgitation they were treating. The ERO average in the COAP trial was 41, whereas the ERO was using the older definition of severe MR in the MITRA FR trial and was less MR at, with an ERO of 31. There was smaller ventricles, so kind of earlier in the disease state. They hadn't remodeled as much as they had in the mitral FR. They were larger ventricles, so sicker hearts. And they used more clips on average in the COAP trial than they did in mitral FR. So they got a perhaps more complete reduction in mitral regurgitation than they did um, in COAP. So just in summary, there was more MR, healthier hearts, and a greater MR reduction with longer follow-up in the COAP trial, which I think explains the positive results there, in contrast to the negative results of the MITRA FR trial, where there was less MR to begin with in sicker hearts, and there was a less reduction in the mitral regurgitation overall. So a few summary points to, to end with, and, and we can talk more about these. Um, mitral regurgitation prevalence increases with age. We saw that from Dr. Malashevsky in his first talk. And it's broadly categorized as primary or secondary. Primary is the broken <laughs> valve, which is great for surgical repair. As you saw, the mitral clip can be done if a patient won't do well with surgery. Whereas secondary MR is really a problem of the ventricle, and you, it doesn't tend to do very well with surgery. <clears throat> so we try to treat the ventricle first, 
And then we can now consider mitroclip therapy for patients based on the COAP trial data if they are continuing to have symptoms and severe mitral regurgitation despite best treatment for their valve. 